Let's now practice converting a z-score into a percentile so we can see how this goes. Once again, a z-score is a converted score where we take a single score, let's say an exam score, an IQ score, or anything like that, we compare it to its mean and see how far away it is from its mean in terms of standard deviations. So in other words, we just say to it, how many standard deviations away is this score from the mean of the distribution. That's all a z-score is. What's really nice, and as we saw a couple of, uh, of lessons ago, is that we can also take what we understand about standard deviations and how scores fit into distributions with standard deviations, and now we can see just how far away in terms of standard deviations a score is, which gives us the percentile. In other words, if we know what proportions of the distribution fall within certain distances from the mean, as we saw, uh, like one standard deviation above and below includes 64%, I'm sorry, 68%, and a little above that actually, of the distribution, we can use that same idea to figure out what other proportions fall within different distances of the mean. So that's what we're gonna do today. So let's start off with an example of Brenda. Let's just take an imaginary person named Brenda, and she wonders about her height, and is she tall for, uh, for her population, for example? Um, so what we can do is, let's say we convert her height into a z-score. Uh, we can do that, uh, well, let's just imagine that we've already done it. So we've taken her actual height, we've subtracted the mean height for uh, females, uh, in, we'll say in the United States, and then we've divided that by the standard deviation of females in the United States in terms of height. And anyway, we find that her uh, height is, uh, turns out to have a z-score of 0.42. So a couple of things we can know immediately from that z-score. A z-score of 0.42 means that she is tall. She's taller than the mean of her distribution. If she, if she were exactly the mean of her distribution, her z-score would be zero because the difference between her height and the mean height would have been zero, right? But because it's a positive z-score, that means that she scored above the mean of her uh, population in this instance, okay? We can also say just how far away from uh, the mean she is in terms of standard deviations. She is 0.42 standard deviations above the mean of her her population, right? Okay, so now let's see if we can figure out the percentile for Brenda. Now what we need to do here is to get some additional information, and luckily uh, statistics textbooks all have uh, some kind of table that already uh, does this for you. You just need to learn how to use the table and refer to it. If uh, you don't have my textbook, for example, that's fine. You can look up a table on the internet. You can just Google a Z distribution table, something like that, and this should pull up. There are probably also some sites that uh, actually just convert it uh, for you. You plug in the information and it tells you the Z, the Z score. But let's uh, see how to use these kinds of tables. So if you're using my textbook, you'll see this in the back. Um, this shows you that the mean uh, is right here, right? This uh, bar X is the mean. The Z is the actual score that we're referring to, right? The actual Z score that we've obtained. And then that uh, greater than Z means everything that falls above Z. So in other words, everything falling above the Z score is just what's from here to the very tail of the distribution. And then uh, anything that's between the mean and Z is going to be right there, right? Okay, so let's try this out. So if Brenda has a z-score of 0.42, we go down in that table to find where is the corresponding line for a z-score of 0.42. Now, of course, in the appendix, I've got dozens and dozens, um, I guess hundreds of rows, uh, that give you everything for different z-scores, okay? And most tables should have that. So you just need to find the part in the textbook where it says 0.42. Uh, and again, in my textbook, this is uh, appendix A. And 0.42 is right there. Now what we see right here is that in uh, between that z-score, in other words, between the z-score and the mean, z minus uh, the mean, uh, is 16.28% of the population. So that's just telling you that between the mean and that z-score of 0.42, there's 16.28% of the people. That's interesting. Uh, and we can use that as well, but I'll show you, of course, uh, what else we can do with that. And then this is saying that uh, every, the number, the proportion of the population that falls above the z-score of 0.42 is 33.72. In other words, 33.72% of the population falls above a z-score of 0.42. 
So then what are we to do? If we want to find out what uh, percentile Brenda falls into, we need to figure out essentially how many people are below her, or what proportion of the population falls below a z-score of 0.42. That's very easy to do here. Uh, probably the easiest way to do that is to take one, which would include everybody, right? 100% of the distribution is everybody right there. And then we just want to subtract everybody that is above the z-score of Brenda. So we would subtract 33.72%. We can do that quite easily here. 1 minus 0.3372, or 100% minus 33.72% is 66.28%. Uh, so therefore, Brenda's score of 0.42, her z-score of 0.42, puts her in the 66th percentile, and a little bit higher, right? So that's wonderful. We can now tell Brenda, Brenda, you are in the 66th percentile for height. That is a little tall uh, for average, but it's not unusual. It's not a, a, a very strange or unusual height, right? We could start to say a little, a little unusual if she were uh, one standard deviation or above, and it would be quite unusual if she were two standard deviations above the height of her particular population. Okay, so that's a quick example for Brenda. Now let's try a, a negative z-score. Okay, so it gets a little tricky when we're doing negative z-scores. It's really not that difficult, but what we do need to do is reverse the table in our minds just a little bit, or reverse the graph in our minds. So let's try that with a negative z-score. Let's say that there's a guy named Jack. He wants to see the same kind of thing. It doesn't matter what it is, but let's imagine that it's height. Let's say that we converted Jack's height into a z-score, and his z-score is negative 0.73. So uh, one thing that we can do is just sort of in our minds, we simply reverse, we, we mirror the uh, graph that we saw, and then we need to change the signs uh, here, okay? So in other words, uh, Jack has a negative z-score, meaning it's below the mean of his uh, population, right? He's below the mean. He's a little shorter than average for his population. He's almost a standard, well, he's you know almost three quarters of a standard deviation below. Uh, the mean of his population. So this is all very interesting, but we need to figure out the percentile. So once again, one thing we can do is simply convert in our minds. We, we don't have to write anything down, but we can just say, okay, so if I'm dealing with negative z-scores, there is no negative z-score in the table, but I can just simply add in a sign in my mind and just say, okay, we're dealing with a negative sign. Now, of course, in this case, we're not subtracting the mean from the z-score exactly because that would give us a negative difference between that. And that's not really what we're looking for. We want to see uh, the absolute value then of the difference between the mean and that z-score. Okay, so the absolute value or the, you know, the, the uh, true value of the distance between those two is, in this case, uh, 0.2673. In other words, what that's saying is, 26.73% uh, of the distribution or population falls between a z-score of negative 0.73 and the mean. Okay, that's fine. And then of course we could just change that sign of who falls below a z-score of negative 0.73 and it is 23.27% of the population falls below a negative z-score of negative 0.73. So we can do that kind of math or we could just kind of do it in our heads. And with practice, this comes uh, much easier, of course. So uh, I recommend uh, looking at some of the practice problems in the textbook or making some up or something like that and continue to work with these. But now let's figure out the percentile then for Jack. Well, if we're trying to figure out the percentile for Jack, that's pretty straightforward actually here because we want to know what percentile he's in. As we can see, all we then need to know is who falls below Jack and as we can see, 23.27% of the population falls below Jack's score. Therefore, Jack is in the 23rd percentile in terms of height for his population. Now, that's rather short. It's not a full standard deviation uh, short, but that's, that's, that's fairly short for uh, Jack's particular population. All right, now that we've practiced converting z-scores into percentiles, it's important to note a little caveat here. Uh, the standard deviation itself is, is okay to use for skewed distributions because the math doesn't change in it and the interpretation doesn't necessarily change. However, it's probably important to note to whoever you're telling it to, this was a skewed distribution, by the way. 
However, z-scores assume that the distribution is symmetrical. And so if you have a skewed distribution, you probably shouldn't be uh, using z-scores to report anything about it. For example, income is virtually always positively skewed, okay? And so that might be a, an instance where you, you would maybe not uh, want to report a z-score. It may be inappropriate uh, in that instance. Now to summarize what we did today, once again, a z-score is a standardized way of, of discussing how a single score fits into its population or sample. So it gives us some nice context for that particular piece of information. The beautiful thing about z-scores is they are in standard deviation units, and so we can use them essentially universally to compare how any one score falls within dis its distribution to another score to see how it falls within its distribution. And that can sometimes be fun uh, and interesting information. And so using that, we can also convert it to a percentile because we, we can know the proportion of the distribution that falls between a z-score and the mean, for example, or between a z-score and the tail end of the distribution. And that information can be uh, very useful telling us what proportion of the population are above or below that particular z-score. And once again, gives us more context, more meaning to that distribution and to that score specifically. Now, that's it for what we call uh, descriptive statistics. The next thing we're going to do is start to talk about inferential statistics. So I will see you then.